Well, Rob, let's hold, and we're going to dip in on uh, NBC News coverage with Pete Williams, who has a development uh, on all of this vis-a-vis -vis the Al-Qaeda terrorist uh, group. Pete? In planning further terror attacks against the United States. Now, according to a nationwide law enforcement bulletin just out today to the nation's police departments, he's identified as Adnan G. El Shukri Juma, age 27, thought to be from Yemen and possibly Guyana. But law enforcement authorities fear he is, in essence, another Mohammed Atta. Atta, you'll recall, is the man that officials believe was the top planner of the September 11th attacks on New York and Washington. Now, this law enforcement bulletin that has gone out today to the nation's police says that the U.S. has information indicating that he may be involved in an al-Qaeda terror activity or terror activities and may pose an imminent threat to U.S. interests or persons worldwide. That is, both against targets here in the U.S. or American targets overseas. Now, the bulletin says there is no specific threat attributed to him, but they believe he's very much a key planner, and they're learning more and more about this man as the day goes by, uh, days go by and have just recently discovered how important he may be. For example, he is thought to be a trained pilot, and in fact, one of his Arabic nip nicknames is Jafar the Pilot. U.S. authorities believe he was in the United States after September 11th, after the 9-11 attacks, and they don't know where he is. He could be here, he could be anywhere in the world, and they're hoping that uh, they'll get cooperation from law enforcement authorities worldwide in trying to find him. But they put a very high priority on finding this man, El Shukri Juma, because he is a potentially key figure, they say, in any further plans to attack the U.S. And they say this information has been verified by captured al-Qaeda operatives who've been interrogated by the U.S. Tom. Uh, Pete, let me ask you a couple of follow-up questions. How do they think he got in here in the first place? They think he got in, uh, well, he tried to come in legally. Now, whether he actually did so legally or not, they don't know. But he travels with a multiple number of passports from Canada, from uh, Guyana, from Trinidad, from Saudi Arabia. He uses, uh, he has a long list of aliases. And they say he is a very good English speaker. Uh, one uh, investigator told me today that he speaks English with no Arabic accent whatsoever. And so he is adept at passing as uh, uh, someone from various parts of the world. So it's believed that he traveled into the U.S. Uh, whether he did so legally or not, I don't know, because I don't know if he was using a legal passport and his real name at the time. And Petey sounds pretty radioactive to me. Have they not been aware of him before? Just Williams, uh, 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 breaking this story uh, today uh, about this uh, Adnan El Shukar Juma, and uh, before we can talk to Pete, uh, I'd remind uh, our audience that uh, General Wayne Downing's uh, last job was as the president's uh, chief counselor on terrorism. And General, this character was familiar to you. Tell us about him. Well, certainly uh, not him as an individual, but he with that capability. Uh, I think we've made a lot of changes in our air system, as you well know, inside the United States. It's very tight overseas. But I'll tell you an area that we were concerned about and I think we're still concerned about, and this is charter aircraft and private aircraft. I mean, we have almost 500,000 private airplanes and pilots in the United States. Uh, we, 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 we have a lot of charter aircraft out there. While we while we've got great controls over the commercial airliners, the the, the 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 freight haulers, one of the concerns is is how do you control this guy at some small airport? You know we've got thousands of airports around the and United most States. Most of them you can walk right on. You can walk right on. You you have to present a license in, in, in order to uh, to rent an aircraft. But if you've got that pilot's log and and you've got good uh, forge credentials, you can theoretically get your hands on an airplane. And so that is something we are all concerned with. Now, this is not going to be a 757, but, uh, but certainly uh, you could rent a, uh, a twin-engine commercial aircraft, and you could put a, a, a pretty good load on that. And so we are concerned about that, and that is one of the vulnerabilities that I think the Homeland Security people are trying to fill right now. So this is a, I, I think it's very significant that they that they aired this threat. I would imagine that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed could well be the source of this information. 
and that's why they're taking it so seriously. We now have uh, Pete Williams available to talk to us, who uh, just broke this story, as we saw on uh, the NBC television network with Tom Brokaw. And Pete, uh, uh, what I missed at the top was the connection that the, the meaning of uh, breaking this story today is this connected with the war. No, I don't think it is, uh, Brian. It is more connected with uh, getting out the word as soon as agents discovered how important this man is. Now, let me go through this with you. Uh, he, is, uh, he is thought to be a top al-Qaeda operative in the U.S. who could be involved in planning further attacks against the U.S. And the information we have comes from a nationwide law enforcement bulletin that's just been sent out today to the nation's uh, law enforcement departments. You know law enforcement. It's called a BOLO, be on the lookout. And uh, the man is identified as Adnan El Shukra Juma. He is 27 years old. He is thought to be from Yemen or possibly Guyana in Africa. But law enforcement authorities fear that he is, in essence, another Mohammed Atta, the man who was uh, thought to be the top planner of the 9-11 attacks. Now, this bulletin says that the U.S. has information indicating that he may be involved in al-Qaeda terror activities and may pose an imminent threat to U.S. interests or persons worldwide. And they are equally concerned about attacks not only in the United States, but against Americans or American interests overseas. They don't know where he is, and they don't know whether these attacks could be here or could be overseas. Now, having said that, this uh, bulletin, this, this BOLO bulletin, says there is no specific threat attributed to him. It's not like they've uncovered some specific plan. It's rather they've discovered that he is a key al-Qaeda planner. Now, the FBI is learning more about this man and has just recently discovered how important he may be. For example, Brian, he is thought to be a trained pilot. And as a matter of fact, one of his Arabic nicknames is Jafar, the pilot. Um, U.S. authorities believe he was in the United States after September 11th, but they don't know where he is now. They don't know how long he was here, how he got here, how he left. They're not sure, or even whether he left. But they put a very pri uh, high priority on finding him because... Uh, al Shukri Juma is thought to be a pivotal figure in any further plans to attack the U.S. And investigators tell us this information has been verified uh, by talking to captured al-Qaeda operatives who have been interrogated by the U.S. Pete Williams, thank you for that from our Washington uh, newsroom, uh, breaking this story uh, this evening. And uh, all of this, uh, the, the, the uh, specter of domestic terrorism has been part of the national conversation in the days leading up to this widely expected war uh, in uh, Iraq. Uh, the anti-war factions in the United States had uh, feared uh, very acutely that this would perhaps uh, set off a round of domestic terrorism. My colleague Lester Holt is at uh, uh, headquarters with uh, an expert in this area to delve into this a bit further. Lester? Thank you. I'm joined uh, with Steve Emerson, who has been working the phones even as we speak. And Steve, and I just went on the FBI's website. He's not on that list that they've been carrying of most wanted terrorists. Have you heard this name before? I, I've seen his picture before. His name has actually been cited in a previous FBI warning issued uh, earlier this year uh, reference, referencing a Pakistani who they thought came into the United States before 9-11. One of his nom de guerres or aliases was Jafar Al-Tayyar, also one of the same uh, aliases used by this person that Pete Williams has just pointed out may be in the United States. I, I've just learned that uh, a similar sounding person with the same name and the same date of birth owns property in Florida um, and was at least in the United States in the year 2002. So uh, the information may be quite recent in terms of identifying him as either being part of some type of plot or in terms of the intelligence that said there's a need to put out this information now. But, but what about his, his relative rank in the Al-Qaeda structure? Uh, has he been previously known to, to be as influential or as big a fish as he seems to be now? I don't. My, from what I understand, he was known as the pilot, he was known with a group of people that were connected to some radical Somalis um, and Yemenis, and that he was not, however, in the senior leadership of al-Qaeda, but certainly somebody who had been trained as a pilot and could have been, let's say, a mid-level uh, operative recruited by al-Qaeda to carry out an operation. Look, Mohammed Atta and the others before 9-11 were not on our radar screen either. They would have been considered not even mid-level operatives for al-Qaeda before 9-11. And while there have been arrests and detentions in this country post-September 11th, uh, we haven't heard about that many big 
known al-Qaeda operatives in this country, have we? No, in fact, if he is in this country um, and, and could be found, that would be the biggest arrest, uh, obviously, since 9-11, of anybody connected to al-Qaeda in the United States. Um, th there may have been some surveillance, and I'm not sure. Uh, the government obviously wants to be careful about what it releases, but clearly uh, there are roots in the, in the United States. The only question is, and as Pete reported, uh, is, is whether he's here right now. Obviously, uh, for reasons that, that I do, I'm not aware of, the FBI decided we've got to make it public right now. We've got to make sure the public starts looking for this man's picture so that maybe they can ID him and we can pick him up very quickly. There has been this sense of optimism among federal law enforcement officials in recent weeks that they may have turned the quarter, corner in the battle against al-Qaeda and its ability to, to wage large attacks. Has this changed that perception if, in fact, this man is who they believe he is and if he is in this country? Well, certainly this is a guy that you would consider as... Uh, a clone of the 9-11 conspirators in terms of somebody who may not, not have had a track record, who was under the radar screen, but who certainly ha hung around with the bad guys and, and, you know, basically became a made member of Al-Qaeda because he went to jihad camps, as we think he did. He then became a pilot. Question is, is he actively working for them now? He may have severed his relationship. On the other hand, for various reasons, and I believe it must be recent U.S. intelligence just acquired by the CIA related to the FBI, suggesting that this guy is still connected to al-Qaeda and may be planning or involved in some type of plot against the United States. And the word is be on the lookout. Adan Shukrajiyama is the man that the FBI now looking for. Steve Emerson, thanks for coming in, sharing your expertise. Let's go back now to Brian in Kuwait City. Brian?